right, so the goal of this video is to get that motor spinning. So uh, first thing we need to do, now that everything's mounted, is finalize all these wires. So I'm just gonna start in the positive. Okay, so uh, kind of just a plan for this video is I'll do each wire one at a time and I'll explain what it does. So this one's pretty simple. I mean, obviously we have the positive from the battery. It just goes into this 350 amp fuse, which will then go through this wire into our contactor. Here goes our contactor wire that then goes to the battery positive on our motor controller. Um, if y'all don't know, a con the contactor is basically just a really big relay. Since this thing's running 90 volts, you need something a little beefier. And then just an FYI, um, we are doing all the positive right now, which may seem dangerous, but the negative of this battery is not connected over to that battery and it's not connected to the frame. So we are all good, nothing's connected. And then when we start doing negatives, I'll make sure all this is unplugged. So with this, the whole back section is done. Right now we just have the fuse out so everything's safe and the front's not connected yet. But um, so yeah, I'm just gonna give a little quick explanation. Uh, keep in mind every like motor controller battery setup is different, but this is how ours goes. We have M1, which goes to our field one windings. And then we have um, M3, which is over here, which goes to our field two. So we have both of our fields on these black wires. And then we have armature one goes to battery, yeah, battery positive. And then we have armature two goes to M2 on our motor controller. If you're making your own, yours might be different, but that's how ours is. So then uh, we just have battery positive going to positive, battery negative going to negative, pretty simple. So. Yeah, we just need to connect the two batteries up front and then we're gonna do, uh, there's one 16 pin plug on the controller and then it might run. So we got the uh, batteries connected together. Uh, we need to zip tie this a little bit out the way, but there should be enough room for our legs. And that finishes all of our two gauge wires. Uh, we don't have the fuse in right now, but um, yeah, this all seems correct. So now we're getting on to the small wires. So these are, I think, 22 gauge wires, and we need to just route these to the throttle, um, the foot switch and kill switch and stuff like that. Right, so we're kind of doing some wiring, but we're also going to wrap up some of the like strength things that we need. These motor mounts are pretty much there, but they just need some extra gusting. So I kind of marked out some uh, trapezoid kind of gussets that's going to go on the bottom. I added this huge bar up top and I'm going to add a couple more triangles on there, but just a little bit more metal work and then we can finish up this 12 pin connector. So 
I just spent a little bit making up this little chain guard because this is a high horsepower application. Our head's going to be right over here. We really want to be safe with this. So it's as simple as we're just going to use up these two motor mounts right in here. So it will pivot with the motor and then it's going to guard our chain like so. So that's going to be right over where our chain needs to be. Keep us nice and safe. PM tape, we're going to attach this resistor. So this is called a pre-charge resistor and um, you need it because inside your motor controller there's a bunch of capacitors and then when capacitors are uncharged they essentially act like a, a just wire, no resistance at all. So when you flip your switch and the contactor contacts, all the power is going to go through and it'll act like there's nothing that, or it'll act like there's just a wire there. So you'll get a huge current spike and that can damage a lot of internal equipment inside the motor controller and it can cause pitting, welding, and other stuff in your contactor. So what you need to have is a pre-charge resistor. So we have it wired in parallel between each side of the contactor and we have a resistor right there. So this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor which would make it that only four milliamps is flowing through there. So basically when we put the fuse in, this will uh, connect our pre-charge resistor and I'll just kind of very slowly charge up the capacitors so then they'll be charged and we won't have a huge current spike when the contactor flips. So our switch panel is all wired up. We have our uh, key switch, which just kind of starts powering up the motor controller, just get it warmed up. And then we have our contactor switch, which connects the main power. And then we have our forward and reverse, which is an on off on switch. So when it's up, you'll be in forward, and then in the middle, it'll be nothing, and then in reverse, it will be, yeah, reversed. So with that, all the wiring's done. It's a little, um, a lot of it's just twisted together. It's just uh, for us to diagnose things and make sure everything's right before we finalize. So when we turn the kill switch on, we do have one problem. We get the green power LED, so that's a good sign. It means our motor controller actually works a little bit. But there's an error LED on it, a red flashing LED, and it's blinking seven times. So that means we have error, co error code number seven, which is programming out of range. So that means that our motor controller is not program properly for it to work with either our batteries or our motor or anything in between. So right now we are waiting I think three more days and we will get a handheld programmer that will plug into our motor controller and then um, so yeah I'll have to try and figure out how to program this thing and make it work with our motor. But if we can get that working this thing should be running. So we just got the controller. Uh, we only have this thing for five days. It's a rental because buying this thing is $500. So uh, basically I'm just going through everything on the motor. So we have a bunch of little statuses. It'll give you all the values like voltage and things like that. We're in our tests, which just kind of shows all the values. And so here's our forward and reverse switch. Y'all can see that forward just turned to one and then you flip it. Now it's in, I guess, neutral. And then we got reverse. So that works. Pretty happy about that. And then if you go down to um, your acceleration potentiometer, uh, can you see that? Yep. See how it's going up all the way to 99.5 and then back down to zero. So those two things work. So our kind of interface things with our controller are all working. So it's all just about the programming now. All right, so we changed up a couple of parameters, did a little programming, and I think this is actually gonna work. So we got key switch on and then contactor. And then now we have forward. Okay. Okay. So now we're just watching the motor? Yep. This should work. We still have a warning light, but it's a warning, not an error, I guess you could say. So. Oh. I hear it. Oh, dude, that sounds really cool. That's really high pitched. <laughs> oh. <laughs> dude. Okay. Yeah, yeah, show us the throttle action. Let's get both. So, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's nothing connected to it right now, but um... Hey, give it, give it, give so it some juice. We gotta make sure. 
Oh man. So yeah, um That's actually really cool. <laughs> if y'all can see it's not stopping. So there's uh there's something in there that like has an inch. So I guess it's that. So, so it's definitely some more programming needed to be done, but nice it stuff. did. It works. So yeah, that's insane. Good work, man. <laughs> this is all above my pay grade. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. It's still not immediate, but it's that's super fast. <laughs> yeah, all right, let me see. So that's 1.1 uh, 1 in. So what we're doing right now is we're changing the acceleration figure to see how yeah. quick it can just So there's, it. um. so basically there's like a little time, you can add a time delay so that it takes, you know, like with no load, 1.5 seconds to fully floor it. So it was set to 1.5 and right now it's set to 1.5 and y'all can probably, <laughs> tell the difference <laughs> so I mean yeah it'll be a little bit more responsive now so with all that being said we're still not done programming this thing if you all might have noticed uh, I just hit the throttle a little bit wait yeah and it runs for approximately 10 seconds so there's a lot of different like inches inch and creep modes for this thing because it's used in forklifts a lot so basically there's probably a one where there needs to be a zero or a zero where there needs to be a one and it's just doing this creep function. So, all right guys, so with that, this thing is hopefully fully programmed. Just a little recap of what we did. Uh, first, I had to wire everything up, and I mean, a couple little headaches just figuring out what everything went, but that wasn't that bad. Then we had to wait for this thing to come in, which actually, I was, I was kind of skeptical whether we could get it running, but the programming wasn't too difficult. Uh, I made four adjustments on this thing. So first of all, we changed the accelerator to work. And then we changed the speed limit so that when this thing gets low on charge, it will limit our speed to 50% uh, right before. So we'll know kind of when we're getting low battery. Just just kind of a drivability thing. And then I programmed out that creep at the end. And then we made the power curve linear. So it's basically the delivery is gonna be more direct instead of smoother. So with that, this thing, uh, after we clean up the wires, is going to be ready to drive. So y'all make sure to stay tuned for next video where we drive this thing.